Howdy folks, welcome back to War Thunder Ground Forces with the mighty Jingles. And if you have no idea what is going on right now, well you're in good company because neither did I. This was a simulator battle. I know, scary shit right? More footage from the Saturday live stream I did with Origin. On his, uh, I was going to say Twitch, he actually streamed it on YouTube. Which was a first. Yes, so War Thunder Ground Forces simulator battles. I wouldn't dare try to fly a simulator battle in War Thunder aircraft because I don't have a pilot's license and 400 hours of flying experience. <laughs> I exaggerate slightly, but only slightly. Tanks, on the other hand, well, it's not easy, but it's definitely much more accessible than I was expecting it to be. But anyway, first things first. Initial impressions. No third-person camera. There are two different modes of view. The one that you're looking at right now is from the commander's hatch in the top of the turret of the tank. The other is the gunner's view through the sight of the main gun. One thing that I did find initially, it's probably just because I'm new at it, is that when you start turning the tank in one direction and the turret in the other direction, particularly on tanks like this T-28, that have a forward mounted turret, you can very very easily lose track of which direction the tank is actually moving. But that's something that I'm sure you will get used to, given enough experience of playing simulator battle mode. Now the other thing that's going to let you know that you ain't in Kansas anymore is there is absolutely no assistance in spotting enemy vehicles. When you move it up to realistic battles from arcade, you lost your armor penetration indicator, you lost your shell drop indicator, letting you know how far you needed to elevate your gun in order for your shot to land on the target, but you still got, once the enemy tanks had been spotted, their name. Nice big red letters over the top of the tank to let you know there he was. As you can see here, you don't get that in simulator battles. Origin taking the kill there. I was just too slow getting my 76mm gun pointed at the side of that enemy tank. Now this is something that catches people out a lot. My shot just went straight through that tank. And my second shot goes straight through him and out the other side as well. That is a dead tank. It's been knocked out. But it's an AI tank. It's one of those little Panzer twos. Player-driven tanks are removed from the battlefield after they have been knocked out and the player has jumped into another vehicle. You do get limited respawns in certain classes of tank in simulator battles. Knocked out AI tanks, on the other hand, at the moment, remain on the battlefield, but they're non-physical objects. You can't take cover behind them because shots will go right through them. And I'm not entirely sure which way Gaijin are leaning with this. On the one hand, you could make the argument that having dead tanks on the battlefield is just confusing. Um, it can be very, very difficult to tell, particularly at range, whether or not a tank is in play or not. Um, unless the turret's been blown off, it's not always obvious that a tank has been knocked out. He could have just been immobilised. Uh, he might have had suspension damage and he's sitting there trying to repair his tracks, in which case, yeah, you should be shooting at him. But he could also have been knocked out, and you just can't tell from the range that you're at, so you waste shots firing at him. And sometimes, even at point-blank range, you just can't tell whether or not a tank has been taken out of action. What's actually happened here is that Panzer III got nailed at almost exactly the same time I fired my first shot. Now, you could argue that if I'd been paying attention to the combat messages, I would have seen that a Panzer III just got taken out. But there's no name above that Panzer III. So, are you willing to take the chance that that was the Panzer III that the combat message was referring to? Because if it was not that Panzer III, you're about to get shot at point-blank range. And so, I think the argument is being made that they're removing tanks from the battlefield shortly after they have been knocked out in order to reduce the amount of confusion that occurs. And yet, isn't that kind of 
fog of battle, that kind of uncertainty, that kind of having to make sure that a tank is dead before you proceed past it. Isn't that exactly the sort of thing that we want in... Well, this is a simulator battle. It's supposed to be as realistic as it gets. It already is butt-clenchingly tense when... Is that an enemy tank? Yep, I'm being shot at. That's an enemy tank. <laughs> you know, you just... You don't know. I cannot see this guy. He can clearly see me. There's a friendly going in to engage him. I've been hit again. My tank is damaged. But this kind of... Ah! <laughs> is, is exactly what people are playing simulator battles for. And while, you know, everything is, of course, subject to change, I'm pretty sure that the majority of people who are playing simulator battles would have absolutely no problem whatsoever with knocked out enemy tank Rex remaining on the battlefield. Because it's a simulator battle. It's supposed to be as realistic as it gets without having your legs blown off every time your tank gets knocked out. You know, that sort of thing is exactly why people are going to be playing simulator battles as opposed to the, you know, arcade or even realistic. I don't mean to give the impression, by the way, that I wasn't enjoying this. I very, very much was. It was confusing as all hell at first. But that's to be expected. It is the most realistic battle mode of a very, very realistic overall tank combat game. And that's what kind of made this all the more surprising. The fact that some tanks remain on the battlefield after they've been knocked out, but you can shoot through them. Other tanks don't remain on the battlefield after they've been knocked out. And perhaps I just had the misfortune of... Um, oh, that will be an ammunition fire. And there goes his turret. <laughs> but yes, very, very surprising and more than a little confusing at first. I mean, I expected sim battles to be confusing the first few games I tried, but it wasn't helped by the fact that some tanks remained on the battlefield after they'd been knocked out, but you could shoot through them, and other tanks didn't remain on the battlefield after they'd been knocked out. So it was an inconsistent experience, my first couple of sim battles, but it was still fun. And I do suspect, you know, bearing in mind that everything is subject to change, it's a test server, and the fact that some tanks were and some tanks weren't probably indicates that I just had the bad timing and misfortune to play my first couple of simulator battles at a point on the test server when things were up in the air, the developers haven't figured out which way they're going to go, or they have figured out which way they're going to go and the, the code just isn't in place yet. But, you know, this is the most realistic mode of a very realistic tank battle game. I would be stunned and disappointed if we didn't see a version of the Ground Forces test server in the very near future where in simulator battles knocked out tanks not only remain on the battlefield but are also physical objects that can get in the way of not only your tank but also the shots that you fire because otherwise it's not a simulator battle is it? And you know I'm sitting here complaining that disappearing tanks is a little too arcadey. There are going to be people complaining that having automatic gears <laughs> in your tanks in simulator battle mode is too arcadey. At the moment, I don't need to operate the gears in my tank. I'm driving the T-34 here. And at the moment, in sim battles, you have the option of uh, automatic gears. That's going to be a little too arcade for the, you know, the, the kind of people who are going to be wanting to play sim battles are going to be the kind of people who want to actually smell the oil and the cordite while they're playing the tank. And, you know, that's, that's absolutely fine. And there are a very vocal segment of the community complaining that you are able to drive your tanks without worrying about gear changes in simulator battles. And, you know, to a degree I can certainly sympathise. I saw a forum thread the other day where somebody was complaining that the Ferdinand took a couple of seconds to react when you tried to turn the tank left or right. And the reply was, you need to be in the right gear. Enemy tank spotted. First shot, too high. Lower my sights. And shots start going in on target. But yeah, back to the whole changing gears issue, just as one example. If, for example, you're trying to do it properly, and you're trying to do it with manual gear changes, and you, for example, are in the wrong gear, and you're getting flanked, and 
you're struggling to turn your tank around and you die because the guy who was circling you was cruising along on automatic gears <laughs> well, what's the point of playing sim battles so I can certainly sympathize with you know that point of view and it's all part of the balancing act that Gaijin are gonna have Ooh, okay can't get through the tank trap fair enough shouldn't be able to get through the tank trap it's a tank trap back up there's a KV moving forward no problem I'll just follow him over the bridge and he's stopped and oh look <laughs> He spotted a knocked out AI enemy tank, the Panzer II that I just killed. He doesn't know it's dead. So he's wasting ammunition shooting at a tank that is dead. Um, and blocking the road. I can't get over now. He's just sitting there. Yeah. That's the only thing wrong with multiplayer games. Other people are in them. But anyway, yeah. I mean, Gaijin obviously have a massive balancing act ahead of them trying to trying to pick and choose which of the game mechanics they're going to make hardcore and which they're going to make easy mode particularly with regards to simulator battles because I have really enjoyed playing the simulator battles that I have played so far um, I think they're incredibly accessible much more so than I was expecting and the only real differences in simulator battles compared to realistic for example is the fact that enemy tanks don't have the name in red letters over the top and there's no third person view now, I think that's great, because I'm a massive noob, <laughs> and, um, and I like the fact that the simulator battles are that little bit more difficult, but still accessible at the same time. Of course, you can't please all the people all the time, and I fully understand, and to a degree sympathise, with the, uh, the more hardcore members of the tanking community, for whom that is not going to be enough. So Gaijin do have one hell of a balancing act ahead of them, and I don't envy them their jobs one little bit, because no matter which way they go, they're going to be upsetting somebody. I personally think sim battles are, with the exception of the whole disappearing tanks issue, in a pretty sweet spot. And I'm, you know, as a massive noob, I am probably representative of the majority of Gaijin's audience here. But changes are, of course, inevitable, so I'll be paying particularly close attention to how simulation battles are panning out on the test server and uh, I'll be bringing you more news on that subject in the future. As always, take care on that battlefield and I'll catch you next time.